In this video, I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT for data science and data analysis. We're going to use this tool to do some tasks such as solving coding questions, translating Python code to R, creating queries, creating data visualization, text classification, and more. So let's get started. Okay, let's say that you're working with data and suddenly you have to join two data frames and you forget the function that you have to use to join two data frames in pandas. So what you can do is go to chat.openai.com and here you can write the following. You can write how to concatenate two data frames with pandas and you can be very specific and write how to concatenate two data frames vertically with pandas. So you press enter and now you can get the answer immediately instead of going to stack overflow or just uh, searching this on google you get the answer very fast so here it says that we have to use the concat function and now let's see if we see something about vertically because we want to concatenate vertically okay chat gpt gave us an answer and as you can see it was very specific here it mentioned the axis parameter that we have to add and well it set it to axis equal to zero because we want to concatenate vertically. And also it gave us an additional tip that is add the ignore index parameter in case we want to ignore the index in the output data frame, which is very cool. Okay, now we verify that this tool can help us solve some coding questions that we might have. All right, something else that we do often is working with databases. We have to create queries and do many things to extract data from a database. So here you can also make chat GPT create queries for you. So you can write something like this. Create a SQL query to find users who live in New York and are older than 30 years old. So if you press enter, you're gonna get the answer. And now you can see, it says that here's an example of an SQL query. And well, it's a simple query as you can see here, and it was created by ChatGPT. Here, we didn't give so much information, so it only assumes some generic tables here the for example the users tables and also it assumes some columns but we can give more details so we can create a more complex query for example here i have uh, the following request so here it says a query to list the name of the department which employ more than 10 employees in the last three months and consider the following SQL tables with their properties. So we have the employee table, the department table, and the salary payment table. And we have those columns within parentheses. So we press enter and here we gave more details and we're gonna get more uh, a more complex SQL query. So here is the query that is being created by ChatGPT. And as you can see here, ChatGPT not only gave us the right query but also it's giving us some step-by-step -step explanation so it's telling us how it's using the work clause the group by clause the having clause and more so it also gives us a lot of details on how it created this query and that's very cool okay now let's do something else and now let's try to create a function in Python and then translate that function into another language. So here I have a Python function. This is a very simple function. And then we're gonna try with a more complex function. So here, let's try out with this one. So let's uh, print this function and let's say, uh, translate this Python function to R. So usually some data scientists no, uh, only Python and they don't know R. First, we have the get square function and then we have this uh, how to use this function. So I can copy this and I can test it out here on R. So if I run this, but first I need to use this one to run the result. So here is the function translated and then here I'm gonna print the result. So this is uh, this is R Studio, by the way. And here I run this code, and I got 16. So I got get square four, and I got as output 16. So it's working fine. But that was a very simple function. Now let's try with something uh, more challenging. Here I have a data frame. So I created this 
this function to clean my data frame and get some stats. So this is a, a data frame and this is my function. So let's translate this into Python code. So first, I'm going to copy this. Here I even uh, made a typo, so I didn't write correctly function, but it still understood my request. So I'm going to copy and paste this one and just correct this. Uh, instead of this, I'm going to write function. And now I'm going to copy again and paste this function that I have here. So now let's test with a data frame. So now I press enter and now it's telling me the R equivalent of the get stats function, which is the function that I created before. So if you don't know anything about R, you can learn a little bit by seeing this solution. So here, for example, to select a column, you have to use this dollar sign. Then this table stats, I think is the equivalent of value counts that I use here. So I use value counts, but here I have to use the table function in R. And here's giving us some explanation of this. And well, finally, it's telling us how to use this get stats function. If I run this, I will get the same output I will get in Python. So it's working just fine. And now let's try something else. So now let's do some text classification. So you can also classify text using chat GPT. So here I have some tweets or some just simple sentences. First, I love my job, chatbot rocks, my dog is adorable, and I hate chocolate. So I'm gonna ask ChatGPT to classify this as positive or negative. Great, and as you can see, we got which sentences are positive and which sentences are negative. And also we got an explanation of why some sentences are positive. And it's telling us that some verbs like love, rock and also adorable indicate positive sentiment and the uh, verb hate suggests a negative sentiment okay now let's try something else let's try now web scraping so usually when we want to collect data from websites we have to use web scraping so we can ask this chatbot to web scrape uh, for example a website using python and you can also specify the library. So I can say beautiful soup. And you can write here the website that you want. It's not gonna work with all the websites. So you have to test it out with a website that you like. In this case, I'm gonna use this website, books2scrape.com, which is this one. And here we see the prices of some books and also the titles. So I'm gonna ask this and let's see what happens. So here's telling us that we can scrape a website with beautiful soup and Python, and now is writing the code to scrape this website. So now let's see how it goes. Okay, ChatGPT finished writing the code to scrape this website, and now I'm gonna copy this. The code seems fine, but there are some little details that I don't understand. For example, here, this H3A, I think is not correct. Anyway, I'm gonna test this out. Sometimes it gives the right answer and sometimes it doesn't give the right answer. And apparently right now we got the right answer. So we got the titles of each book. For example, here, the first one is a light in the, and then we see those three dots and well, it's this book. And we scraped all the book titles in this website. For example, here, it's only the, Himalayas, I think, and we have this book too. And that's great. We successfully scraped this website using ChatGPT. We only have to give the right instruction and it did all on its own. Okay, finally, we can also make ChatGPT plot some data visualizations. For example, I can write plot a linear regression using Python and Matplotlib. Then I press enter and ChatGPT is going to make this linear regression for us. So we said uh, that we have to use this with Matplotlib and ChatGPT is gonna do this. It's gonna also add NumPy to create some random data. And once this is finished, I'm gonna copy the code and test it out in Jupyter Notebook. Okay, now ChatGPT finished writing all this code that is supposed to get us the linear regression. So now I'm gonna copy, paste it and voila we have this linear regression which is very simple we could customize this more by giving more 
uh, more instructions or adding some details to our our command but we made this simple so now it's your time to play with chat gpt and write me in the comment section below which tasks you think chat gpt can help you in your daily basis as a data analyst programmer or data scientist